In this video we are going to learn how to build a counter with Arduino so we can display from 0 to 9 any digit we want. And then we will create an electronic dice, the button first. It's and here after um, adding the delay, let's see how it functions. Stop and stop very quickly. So running and stop. Welcome to our Duino course by Robojax. This course is based on SunFounder 3-in-1 Arduino kit sold on Amazon. Everything that you learn in this course is included in this kit. The course comes with tons of components and projects, all with instruction and video for smart car and other projects that you can use for school or home automation. You can purchase it from sunfounder.com. The kit also comes with full documentation, code download, learning projects with full explanation, wiring diagram, and the code that you can download. The link to purchase the kit and documentation is below the video in the description. In this video, we are going to learn how to build a seven segment display like this so we can display numbers. For that, we need uh, to have either enough wires to connect to Arduino or we can just connect three wires from Arduino and use this uh, chip here. This is 74HC595. So we can shift the values and turn on the seven segment display. Now to understand seven segment display, this is seven pieces of LED that have been labeled. The seven pieces of LED have been, have been arranged in a package that we can turn on each element and make a digit. It starts from here, this is A and it goes count clockwise. So B, C and this is D and then E. F and then at the middle G. If we have decimal point, that's DP or decimal point. And here, so when we turn all six segments except the middle one, it's zero and then it will be one, these two. And for two, we have all of these segments for three and then four, five, six, seven like that, eight, all of them and nine and nine. And the seven segment display, the one that we are using is the model is 5161AS that has common cathodes. As we mentioned before, this is an, an LED or light emitting diode. This is cathode and this side is anode. The one that has a, a line, it's cathode. So all of them are connected together. We call them common cathode. And this is the actual package. So each element is an LED A, B, C, D, E, F, G and then DP. And the pins on the package that we have is like this. So this pin is A and that's B, C is in here, D, E, F, G, and decimal point. So this is our DP or decimal point. And these two pins, which I have not labeled them, these are ground. So we have five pins, the middle at the top and the middle at the bottom, they are ground. And here's the data sheet for 5161AS. Uh, there are different colors available, red, green, blue, and so he here, uh, internal circuit diagram, as I mentioned. And here they mentioned about power dissipation, total peak forward current, and this is continuous forward current that I mentioned, recommended operating current, 12 ampere. So we should keep it about 10 milliampere or 12, that's the maximum. And the reverse voltage that if you connect it in reverse up to 5 volts, it can handle. And this is the operating voltage. Forward voltage is 1.7 to 2 volts. 1.8 is recommended or typical at 20 milliampere. Let's do the wiring. This is a little tricky, but do not worry. We are following from the diagram. I've inserted the chip. 
if you pay attention to the chip, we have a notch here, and this is pin one, there is a circle, so one, two, three, four, five, six, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine up to 16. So keep in mind that this is one, eight, nine, 16. And this is our seven segment display I've inserted. Let me remove this sheet. I've inserted such that it's facing the other way because the decimal point is towards me and the number is in here. I've inserted it such that half is there and half is on this side, like that. And the chip is the same way I've inserted it. First, let's add our ground and negative. From one blue, I've brought a white wire to another blue. So that is because we want to have ground in here. And also from one, from the red, from five volts, I've brought this wire to five volts. That's the first thing. Now let's have a, let's have a look at our diagram. Pin eight is connected to ground and pin 13 is connected to ground. Two pins connected to ground. I'm using white wire. Pin 8 is this one. I'm bringing it to this blue here. That's ground. So we want, if we want, I can bring it a little this way. And then pin 13. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And make sure you connect it to the blue. And then let's look for the 5 volts. Pin 16 and pin 10. 10 and 16. Let's get... 10 and 16, so I'm getting positive from positive to 16. That's the last pin. And pin 10, I'm getting another five, five volts from red. So let's count it. This was eight, nine, 10. So that's also connected. Remember, 16 and 10. So that's done. The seven segment, let's start from the left, we go like that, and then we come to the bottom. So the first pen is in here, which is green. We have a green which goes to this pen. Now, eight, seven, six. So green from pen one goes to six. So that's pen one, and it goes to eight, seven, and then six. Yellow from pin 2 goes to 5 because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So from pin 2, yellow goes to 5. Let's get pin 2. And it goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That blue was 6, so this is 5. Now the middle pin goes to ground via resistor. So the middle pin, which is ground, I'm getting it. It goes to this resistor, to this point where the resistor is connected to the ground. After that, pin 4 goes to 15 because the last one is 16, so this is 15. Now pin 4. After pin 3, that's pin 4, it goes to 15. Second pin. Now the last pin goes to pin 1. That's our last pin. Let's put it from the bottom of these wires to pin 1. So we can see the digits. And now let's go from here. Pen 1 from the bottom goes to pen 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Pen 1 goes to pen 4. So pen 1 here. And let's put it to 1, 2, 3, 4. Pen 2. Using blue, it goes to 3. Pin 2 goes to 3. I've connected it to 3. 
and the third pin is not connected because these are all connected so we have a resistor and then the fourth pin using green to pin 2 so the third pin is empty go to fourth go to pin 2 and the last pin in this line pin 5 goes to 7 So pin 5 goes to pin 7. Pay attention. This is 8 and 1 pin here which is empty. That's pin 7. And now we have 3 more wires. Pin 11 of the chip is connected to 8. Remember this was 8 and then 9, 10, 11, 8. 9, 10, 11, it goes to pin 8, and here, pin 12 goes to 12, so pin 12 goes to twelve. And pin 14 goes to 11. So 14 is third from the from this side. That is connected. And lastly, we have to connect 5 volts on ground to the breadboard because we have just connected without any power. So that's 5 volts from Arduino. I'm connecting it to one point on the red. And then ground from Arduino is connected to one point on the blue. Now the wiring is completed. Let's open the first code is 5.10 or 5.10. Go to file, open, the, go to the folder where you have downloaded 3-in-1 kits, main, learning project, uh, and go down until you see 5.10, shift out. This is our code. We have defined ST pen, pen 12, and FH pen that is our pin 8 and ds pin is pin 11 we can define different pins and then we have an array and if i press enter so as you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so we have a total of 10 values inside the setup we have defined all the three pins for the chip using pin mode as output and inside the loop, we are going uh, setting this number variable called num from 0 to 1 less than 10, which is 9. So this num becomes 0, 1, 2, 3, 9. Every time the loop comes back, it will increment at this point. So this means increment or add 1 to this. Initially, it's 0 and it comes, and this pen is set to low. And as you can see, the S and CH pen, it's just shift out. We are using a function called shift out. And these two pens, my first bit, and then from the array, the num comes here. We have uh, learned about array and picks up a value from array. And it sends that value. And then we write back to this pen, which was low, and make it high, and then one second. So this will write one digit and it goes back zero and next time so the zero comes here and becomes one and then we write one and it comes back it becomes two of course we compare two is smaller than ten and print three four five six when the last time it prints nine it comes here it becomes ten and the num is not smaller than ten the loop will exit now this loop which is up to here, exit, it will come to this point, and 
it goes back and repeats. So 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9 and, and so forth. It will run like this as long as it has power. And here is the demonstration. As you can see, the counter is just running and counting for us from 0 to 9. And every digit goes one second. And here, if you reduce this and make it, let's say, uh, 500 millisecond, which is half a second, or let's make it even 300 millisecond, and let's upload it. Now, once it's uploaded, you can see this is now going very fast. I just changed it to 100 millisecond. Let's see. Now this is very going uh, going very fast. And here is the homework. Write down a counter that writes from nine to zero. So decrementing the same loop, just decrement it. The second project is electronic dice, which we have a push button, and we are just uh, emulating that. Uh, so first, let's uh, let's press it, and it's supposed to run because maybe it j doesn't have much time. So this is running, and now let's press and stop. So that's our dice. This time it came for something like that. So let's see it. Uh, now let's open the electronic dice. Click on File, Open, go to Sun Founder. Sun Founder 3-in-1 Kit main, and then this one says learning project, and that code is 6.2. Here, and select electronic dice and open. So this is our code. Again, this is exactly the same, except we have defined a button pin, and all these values. For it. So we have 10 here, but we are not displaying all, and all of them. This is a number and this is a state of uh, dice, and we have defined these three pins. This was initially like that, but in order to eliminate usage of a resistor, I, I typed pull up, so we don't need to put extra resistor for the button pin. And here we are using interrupt. Let me press enter so you can see it. We have all these elements and here we have used this interrupt. Define this pen as a digital to interrupt pen using attach interrupt roll dice. So this will run this function which is at the bottom of the code. This was falling. I changed it to rising so we don't need the resistor. It will work. Otherwise if you put the resistor do not change it. It should be falling. Inside the setup we check if the state is equal to zero, then show number, and then get some random number, convert it to integer. This is called casting, because this might be string, and we are converting it to integer, and it goes to show number, which is another function with a five millisecond delay. Then the loop will continuously come back and does this and compare. Now, let's see roll dice and then show number. So show number is exactly the same as the first project. So it will just display uh, the number that we, w we are passing here. That number comes here and will pass it. But dice is here. So the dice, when you press it, it takes the state, which is initially 0. We convert it to 1 and change this. So this is called toggle. If you forgot from the previous lesson, let me explain. If the state has a value, it can be either 0 or, or 1. And state have been defined here. Initially, it's 0. Let's say this is 0. So if that is 0, so we have a 0 in here. And this means not. It means the opposite. So 0, the opposite of 0 is 1 in digital. So now this becomes 1 and stores in this variable. So we have just changed it. 
if it is 1, we are taking 1 and make it not, which is 0, and then it stores it. So we are just toggling it every time the push button is pressed. I have added this push button that are connected using these two wires to ground and this red is connected to pin 2 so we are reading the state of this push button. And here is a demonstration so when we press when we press the button first it's supposed to run between 2 and 6 and randomly very quickly this is 50 milliseconds delay which we cannot see it and then let's roll our dice. When you press it, you see sometimes it goes very quick and it will stop. The reason for that is that we should have some delay to compensate for the pushing our finger because the state of the uh, button is changing every time uh, you press it or it, if, if you hold it for a little longer than a few milliseconds. So now it's four. You see now it's supposed to run. Now again now so this is running like this it's supposed to be running and then press five now running two so this is how the added this 100 millisecond delay inside this roll dice and this will eliminate the uh, unexpected change so when your finger presses it it has 100 milliseconds, it will not change immediately to the next state. And here, after um, adding the delay, let's see how it functions. Stop. And stop very quickly. So running and stop. I'm getting one. Five. And then four. Two. If you want to build a digital clock and also alarm clock, I have separate video on that. The link is below the video in the description.